Well, fellow alchemists, welcome back to our second part of our Flutter Absinthe TDD, where I'm going to take you guys into how we actually start to hook up our task to our API using this kind of repository system. So again, this is kind of based on, uh, there is, this is a, uh, you're going to see some little bit of a problem with syncing up, and that's because, again, I split this video into two. And so I'm recording this beginning of this video for a second video, so you may notice some difference. But uh, in general, um, you're going to see how we start to hook up the uh, task repository to our API and how we can then start to convert this into a block uh, within our next video. So I'll see you guys then. So without fr any further ado, let's go ahead, let's start our, our video. Now we're going to start to get into a little bit more interesting things. Um, we need to actually create a repository in order to, so that we can actually uh, connect to our uh, data. And so what I like to do is, of course, start with my test. I'm going to create a task repository. Test dot. Course import flutter test. Make our thing over here. And I'm going to go over here and create the class for our repository. Class repository dot dot. Repository. I'm just going to start this really kind of test driven. <clears throat> So we're going to test to make sure that we can get pass from API. So we need to get a copy of our repository. I'm going to make one over here. So these are kind of stateless in the fact that they don't hold on to any state. So I'm going to make my uh, let's see, task repository equals to, sorry, task repository, task repository. And we need to actually make up some data in this case. And we could just grab the previous test data just to kind of make things simple. So we're going to expect this. Okay. And we could just use Alt Enter to import our task information. So for my <coughs> tasks, I'm going to Create a task repository, and I'm going to have a get all tasks function. Of course, this is going to complain, so not too bad. We just can, this is the nice part, is just hold down command, click into here, create a function. So this is going to be a list of tasks, get all tasks. And of course, we're going to start off with just the easiest case. Uh, and this one we could just import since it's next to us. Put like this. Okay, looks good. That's what I expect. I expect that the task. Expected task. And here we go. We should get a nice big fat failure. Perfect. Now, the way we actually make this thing work is that we need to actually set up everything in terms of connecting. Um, and we need to also mock out things. So mocking is quite different than what we usually do in Elixir. Uh, I'm still kind of getting used to this. It's kind of a little bit Java-esque to me. Um, but and the nice part is that we do have this nice little library that we got um, from when we import Flutter, the Flutter block stuff, we get this, uh, we get this Makito library, which we can use to basically mock out our, our class. And in this case, we're going to be mocking out basically the GraphQL client. And 
And so how we do that is pretty straightforward. We need to create a class. Let's we'll call it mock GraphQL client. We need to make sure that we extend a mock. And we have to implement the GraphQL client. So basically, if we extend a mock from Makito and we say that it implements the methods from GraphQL client, then we have a basic mocked out object that we can play with. We can simulate what we want to simulate. And so what I need to do now is I need to create a GraphQL client, our mock client. Of course, set this equal to this, the new mock. I need to have our task repository take in this mock. Since it doesn't take that in, we need to go into here, set our GraphQL client. And of course, set that in our constructor. Now, the nice part is that you can kind of, instead of putting in a variable here and setting it within a body of a constructor, you can actually just directly do this in Dart, which is quite cool. So now we can go back to here. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to close this. We can go back to our test over here. And what we need to do is we need to mock out our client so that way we're not doing any kind of, ex of you know, bad stuff. So the way you mock out is you say when the mock client gets a query method. And this is something that I haven't quite figured out how to do yet. I'm guessing it's probably because it needs to be equal. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to put any here, but we will, of course, implement the correct data. So when you try to query the API, we're going to return future value. Uh, I'm going to get into futures in a second. Right now, I'm just going to kind of set up the code for us. So it's going to be a query result. And we need to actually make our data. So in this case, our data is basically going to be this over here. Except for one last thing, we need to actually wrap wrap this in the proper format. Because when we get this data back, we're actually going to be getting back, um, getting it back just like we do in our tests. So we need to wrap this with all tasks, which will then turn in that data. And finally, we set the data to be our data. We to format that, it looks a little bit nicer. And then finally, I will go to here and start to implement this. So um, very quick to talk about uh, futures. Now a future just means that it's you know a promise basically if we have in JavaScript. And so we're just saying that in the future you will get this data. <clears throat> and if I mark this function, as being asynchronous, I can actually use the await syntax, which is a little bit nice. So I can say that uh, the clients, there's a query option over here. So you see this future over here. Well, when we query for data, we can use await here if we mark our function as asynchronous. If I take it out, it's going to complain. But if I put it back in, it's not going to complain. So that way, we can kind of do things in a synchronous way, although it is asynchronous. Now, we need to set up a, some query options. And we need to put in our GraphQL. So basically, this is how you can put in some information, such as you know the variables like we did before for our testing, and also our document node, which is just our query itself. Uh, uses this GPL. 
Now what I like to do is I like to make a basically a constant. So I'll say the git all tasks query. And of course, I'm just going to grab over, go over to uh, where I have up this over here. And I'm just going to grab my query. So I have to type it all out. But it's similar to what we had before, where we say, OK, we're going to have a query. It's going to be all tasks. We want the ID, the name, the completed. Similar to what we did before. And I just put this query over here. Hmm. Sorry, this one should be a constant string. And then we can just return back our simple little uh, task dot from JSON array. Now, the data that comes back from here is something that's quite interesting. So if we take a look over here, it sees we get a query result. Now this data is dynamic. Could be a list of dynamic, or it'd be a map of string dynamic. Because we don't know what it is, we need to actually tell we need to actually coax the data to be what we want. So I'm gonna coax it to be a list of string dynamic. So in this case, there's a handy little function called this from. We're just going to grab uh, get all tasks. What's it? All tasks. Sorry, all tasks. And we just say that it is a map string dynamic. Uh, sorry, this one should be query results data. There we go. Now, if we run our tests, okay, we have a problem. Gear is called on null. Um, ba, 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 ba. Let me check my test. Ah, because let's see. Ah, well, for one thing, this is going to return a future of tests. So I want to actually await and get that. Same thing, we just go over here, mark our test is asynchronous. Okay. Gear error is called unknown. A client query. Let me just make sure. I did do this offline earlier, so oh. Yep, we got that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, all tasks. Very stupid. Happens. There we go. Perfect. And I just want to do one more test with you guys for this episode, and then we're going to work on some more later on. And the last one, of course, is going to be can you get one task? from API using the ID. Now, basically the same as before. I'll just go ahead and write in the asynchronous now. So I can nearly copy most of this. And in this case, instead of saying all tasks, this is going to be get task. I can remove that. And because it's not going to be a list also, I can remove that. In this case, it's not going to be a list. It will just be a single task. So the expected task. And this one's going to be get task. And we're going to pass in the ID of one. Make sure that we get a task back. 
still have this function, of course. So we just need to go to our task repository. We're going to have a future task come back. Task, take the string ID, asynchronous. In this case, we will have something similar. Set get all task query. We're going to have a git task query. So, so similar to our other one, except we need to pass in a variable similar to what we have for our tests. And in this case, we need to, well, first of all, let's go ahead and let's replace this query so we don't forget. But we do have a variable. So part of the document node, we have a variables section. And this is going to be ID for a variable name. And of course, our ID for variable itself matches our variable over here. And then finally, we do task and then from JSON in this case. And in this case, create results.data. This should be get task. So this get task should be this get task. Perfect. Not this one. Okay, get task. So now if we run this, should be good. Perfect. So this is how I start to do some TDD in my apps when I make Flutter apps now, especially when I'm working with uh, the um, AppSynth or any kind of GraphQL uh, data. Um, I will be designing some more tests later this week and hopefully get one more video out for this week. So, but this is a good start for you guys. You start to get an idea how we can test and start to set up some some data. Uh, I think maybe next time we can start to actually implement a block and, and of course start with a block test. And then you can start to see how we can start to build up our app in a nice test driven way. So this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, bye.